Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to a new video of Turbo Grace. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Turbo Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation. And the topic of this video is Hear the Voices of the Lord. The churches are claiming that there are no selected vessels in this time anymore. That the Lord has not brought forth prophets. That the Lord has not brought forth mouse peoples in this time. All this is not the truth. The Lord has all the time used certain vessels to bring forth his voice in the earth. Moses was one, Elijah, David, and so forth. There are plenty of examples. And even today, we have very strongly guided people by the kingdom who are the mouthpieces of the Lord, what I call the voices of the Lord, bringing forth prophetic words, bringing forth dreams and visions to guide the children of the Most High. And you need to listen to them, and you need to hear their message, and you need to follow what is coming forth, because it is the will of the Father. It is what the Father commands, the orders of the kingdom of heaven. But many reject them and say, oh, they do it on their own. No, they don't. These are the people that are standing before the court of heaven. These are the people who are standing with the Lord. These are the people who are standing before the throne of the Most High, almost daily. And they receive what they will relay out of the mouth of the Father to the children on us. And one great mouthpiece is Aaron of Sparrow Cloud 9. And today there is a dream that she had that I want to read you completely because it is very, very important. Brothers and sisters, hear the voice of the Lord. Time for the Great Harvest of Souls, Dream 589, received on Sunday, March 20th, 2022. Dear Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for another day. Thank you for your mercy, love and kindness. Thank you for watching over us in all we do. If not for your protection, we would surely be dead. Father, I do not know where to begin. You have shown me so much in the last several days as I sleep that I feel separated from all that is around me in my waking hours. Apart from daily life and with a different lens, it is the same strength of knowing that was on me after my heart stopped in 2004 and then again in 2008. After about three to four days of this, these faded and I was once again fully present in the nature. But what was this? What am I to make of this feeling happening today? I have not died. My heart has not stopped. Despite this, I feel that something in me has changed. I am different today. I have no fear. Father, please do not let this fade from me, as it feels as if living water has gone into me. My body feels numb and warm. It is tingling and it feels wonderful. Please let this be the start of healing and strengthening from on high. I am yielding to your will, not mine. I had two Vivid, vivid dreams last night. Subdream 1. Building the great temple in Jerusalem. I was with a group of skilled artisans, builders and contractors. We were all very excited. We had gathered in a type of university in Jerusalem. Each of us 
were given several assignments. Our first assignments given to us were focused on the beginning of building the first major elements of the Temple of God. Everyone was so excited. All of us were from various nationalities and races all over the world. What is incredible awesome was that there was no language barrier. We all could understand what each other was saying. Everyone in his room were young looking as this was post-transformation. An announcement was then made by what seemed like an angel of the Lord. Even though the room was massive, the supernatural sound system meant we could easily hear every word of the angel said. The angel then opened a scroll. He read from it and it outlined the importance of what we were about to do. It outlined that we were all selected by God from a wide pool of thousands of artisans. This was all for this special assignment of honoring the Lord and his seat before the world. We all sheared and cried, even through even though the angel was very serious, as he read from the scroll, he cracked a smile and nodded in agreement when we erupted as one in our great excitement. And the angel said, And nothing shall come against you in your plans as given to you by God. Listen to it again. And nothing shall come against you in your plans as given to you by God. Each one of you will be given three tasks to oversee, to design and to implement. God is in you and you will not fail. He will help you at the break of day. You will be given your directives while you sleep and we will start tomorrow bright and early. Another angel then came to each table and placed before each of us a scroll with a wax seal and each of our names. The angel smiled as he handed out to each of us the individualized scrolls. After he finished handing it out, the main angel began to speak again. Now, open your scrolls in order from right to left. This is the order you will begin. Sitting across from me was a Jewish man who was studying all of us. I could feel or could tell that he was quite concerned that we were not holy enough for these tasks. He watched us closely as we opened our scrolls. Reading my first scroll quietly to myself, Aaron, you will construct the altar of the burnt offering. Brothers and sisters, when I read this, the altar of the burnt offerings, it took me right away to what the Lord has told me about the safe havens. The altar must be built so that fire can fall from heaven. That is an Elijah task. This is to be done now. And the scrolls that you hear in this prophecy, it's all about the seal starting. But why is it about the temple? Because in the middle of the seals, the foundation of the temple will be laid. But the temple will be built then in trumpets in the first half. Let us continue. Aaron, you will construct the altar of the burnt offering. This is important and holy unto the Lord. This is important and holy unto the Lord. This is the altar of sacrifice. It should be constructed from stone, 12 unknown stone, as the Lord has commanded me. Tears ran down my cheeks as I read this scroll. I felt so incredible honored. The Jewish man said, What is your first assignment? I say, The altar of the burnt offering. All who sat at our table were so happy for me. They were all so happy for themselves. As each one also had important tasks related to this. Another at our table, I'm a stone carver, Aaron. I'm to help you implement the design. It will be beautiful. Yet another, I am a goldsmith. 
I am to create the golden censer and other vessels and instrument for the altar of sacrifice. And this, brothers and sisters, is the confirmation of the holy item. Praise to the Lord. We were all so happy and excited. We shared as each person read their special assignment. However, the Jewish man still seemed upset, but not angry. What qualifies any of you for this? You are not even Jewish. This is holy and should only be done by those who have studied this. Me, while I'm not Jewish, I am a designer. While I am a woman, I have been through the fire of affliction and been reduced to ashes. There is nothing great that I have done to deserve to be here today. However, the Lord has found something in me, and God has qualified me, along with everyone here, to build his temple. He will be built he will build it quickly and possibly as quickly as he tore it down, perhaps even three days. For God nothing is impossible for him. He can do anything. So what are you designing? The Jewish man said, the menorah. He finally seemed happy. Wow, the sevenfold manifest spirit of God. Wow, this is an honor, it's an honor of great proportion. We all clapped. The Jewish man smiling and agreeing, yes, this really is important. Another at our table. Yes, but everything we do for the temple of our Lord is important. We are all honored to serve him. This temple will stand for years and all will come to worship him here. What an honor. We all shared in agreement. That night, as all of us slept, the Lord instructed us on implementing our designs. When we came back to meet in the morning and started to talk, we quickly noticed that all of the dreams we had the night before were completely in sync with each other. We quickly began our assignments. There was singing and great joy coming from every person there. Yes, the Jewish man as well. Okay, now subtrim two. Evil be be beings conceived. I was in a long building with windows looking down on a grassy strip of rolling hills. On the other side of this was a river. It was a foreign land that I did not recognize. I could hear shouting in a foreign language. I heard, it's time, it's time. I then saw a man dressed in a tunic of gray with a clothes over his head of darker gray. He had black pants and a black head bent. This man was walking from west to east. He was walking on the grass parallel to the river. Behind him, other men followed. These men were all dressed the same. All were traveling to one place to worship. It was a Friday morning on the second day of the fourth month of their calendar. The men were in a hurry. They all entered into a mosque. I then heard shearing from a group of 70 young women. They were chasing after the men that they had just entered the mosque. They were babbling with their tongues and making a unique sound together. While the women were trying to enter the temple Accra, uh, sorry, the temple area, several large men held them back. I then saw that these 70 young women were all filled with evil spirits. They were crying out to have relations with these men. The men called them into the mosque and they had relations right there, on the floor. I was spared having to see this. I then saw the arrival of a very important figure. As he walked in, the women screamed as if he was a rock star. The women shouting in unison, Mastima, Mastima, sleep with us so that we can conceive your children. I'm not sure what the woman shouted what is written above is what it sounded like. I'm not sure what language this was or what it means. 
The rock star smiled and laughed. He then proceeded to have relations with all 70 women, conceiving with each of them. I then saw four mighty angels of God come down from the heavens to strike down this unholy temple. Chapter 2 over. Father, these dreams were very clear. Please help me with all of this. Jesus, Aaron, come up. He once again spoke to me while I sat in my devotional chair. His voice was very clear. Aaron understands the times you are in. There is an increase in the deeds of the wicked because the adversary has conceived with the wicked and burst great evil. Just as God has increased his holy angels upon the earth and his angels' armies are striking down the princes over the regions, so too as adversary, your greatest enemy, increased his strikes against the children of God. Thousands of years ago, Satan, the adversary of all creation, became jealous of the covenant of mercy to Adam promised salvation and that he would deliver him from all hardship. Satan was angry as this wasn't promised to him. Satan was angry that God was granting Adam and his descendants the opportunities to live in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity. Satan then devised a scheme to kill and rid the earth of Adam and his descendants so he could keep the earth as his own realm. He could. He began to destroy men by using the fallen angels to help him. This was a great campaign of evil sent out against men that continues to present day. They slept with women and abomination was created. They taught secrets that they had learned in heaven. They turned these things into evil when given to men. You know most of this story. However, I am bringing you attention to these times now. The enemy knows that I am here and that the kingdom of heaven is near, even at the doorstep. His idea is to kill men and to destroy the earth prior to the harvest of souls and the great move of God. You have seen various demons who are in these leaders over the nations. Their actions are not of God. Permission has been granted for them to carry out their wicked schemes so that the prophecies are fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what I'm teaching you day after day, that the Lord has given permission to the evil one to rise. Lord, so many prophecies are now coming to pass. The USA is like Jerusalem was in, in Jeremiah's time. They are under siege, yet the leaders do nothing. Foreign invaders are swarming into the southern states. It's wicked. Our country will fall. Aaron, I am here. You had a dream two nights ago of a leader. Do you recall this dream? Yes. Subdream 3. President Biden makes uh, makes the pulse begin. It was about President Biden. He was playing in a golf tournament. He was old and frail. He was a best ball tournament for a million. A million or what? I don't know. Everyone was tuning in to witness the feeble, weak president, Pat Opatz. There were two balls. One was the opponent ball and was about two from the cup. To everyone's astonishment, he patted in his opponent ball first. He then walked over to his own ball that was only six inches from the cup and tapped it in. Everyone was in complete shock that he played both balls. Jesus, are you really surprised? Don't believe all you see. Understand this. The demons are in unison with the sons of perdition. They are hosts. Do you think the demon is old and diminished? Unless you allow it to be confused, probably not. This is truth. 
God allows this or that and can rise a leader up and also remove him to the grave. That leader is playing to win for the opponents. He even made him the winner first over his own nation. He is wicked. Now, while the world is destructed, very little attention is given to plots made against Israel and in the USA. However, I have sent angels concerning you to guard you in all you do, because the enemy has nothing new under the sun. And his ways have a pattern you are able to see. There is no new deceptions. You go back to the profile of what he taught the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. You will see that these areas are still the main methods of corruption and deception. Even though my words has established that I will reign here, he is busy setting up his realm as best as he can. Yes, the fallen angels' teaching were outlined in Dream 40. You showed me what the angel taught to men, things that were forbidden. I will repeat it, the excerpt from the dream, here so we can study this again. The Fallen and Satan's Guidelines I received on Thursday, January 24, 2013. The Fallen Angels then began to teach men skills and crafts so that they, were, that they would be worshipped by men as gods instead of them worship the one true God. The result of what these Fallen Angels taught had the opposite effect of the heavenly worship. Okay, brothers and sisters, then here you see it all. You can read it for yourself. I will link it in the first pin comment. We know about what they done about the, the skills for war and beautification to seduce a man and all this. We know all this from the Bible. So let's continue. Well, you see this now. You had another dream a couple of nights ago that outlined the current plans of the enemy. Yes, it was frightening. Subdream 4, preparing of the beast system. I was observing a high-level meeting on the implementation of the beast system. The beast system currently being prepared includes the following. Communication and the flow of information. Anything contrary to their narrative of lies is struck down or covered up with more words of lies. All media organizations in print, on the radio, on television and on the internet to be controlled by the system. The goal is to have one narrative, one truth, and one voice, all opposite of God. This allows. This also includes all music. They all wish to eventually remove all cell phones. This is a polarization, brothers and sisters, that I am speaking about. There is one voice for the kingdom of God. That is the harvest worker, the powerful warrior. And then there is the opposite side, the duality, the one voice for the evil side. Second. Control religious leaders and doctrines. Control anything contrary to the worship of the beast system. Eliminate all those opposing. Bibles to be deemed as hateful to marginalized groups and must be destroyed. No opposition to be allowed. Everything unclean is to be permissible. There is nothing unclean other than those identified as clean in the Bible. Armies of those equipped uh, opposed to Christian were sent out to weep uh, to, to weed out any groups that went against abortion and other unclean practices. Use fear, slander, and death to remove all opposition. Three, money and assets should serve the beast system. All personal assets are to be seized. Bank accounts, properties, homes, and valuables are to be property of the one strong system. Apartments will be provided for families. There will be no cars or individual homes, ranches or farms. All will be taken to cities. There will be one bank, one currency and one governing com commissioner. People will all make the same amount and have an allowance. Some will be given a higher allowance up for greater service or greater, uh, on greater service based and service to the beast. Anyone opposed will be given poorer conditions. All jobs will be part of a job bank. Those no longer contributing will be removed. 
those who serve the beast in greater capacity will live in mansions once owned by the wealthy. They will then enjoy the spoils of the wealth of the wealthy's earning. You see now, this is also a wealth transfer in duality. This is the evil side's wealth transfer, how it will be done. And then we have the wealth transfer of the Lord, where all the funds will be used to serve the kingdom and kingdom purposes alone. It's all confirmed here, brothers and sisters. Force, food and consumption. Food will be vegan. There will be no meat or dairy products of any kind. All things will be plant-based. Rewards will include marijuana-based goods and web ingredients. Alcohol will be restricted. Health care will be provided and pharmaceuticals will be encouraged. If a person becomes a burden, they will be removed. This is to keep the population healthy and safe. Birth control will be regulated. Pregnancies will only be allowed based on various DNA markers. Most pregnancies will be terminated to keep population regulated. Brothers and sisters, this is also what the Nazi regime in World War II did to Germany. Pregnancies will only be allowed based on various DNA markers. Six, transportation. Cars will be eliminated. Those still allowed will be electric. Planes are only for the elite. Trains are only for transport of goods. Families are to be separated if there is opposition. Communication through computers. Seven, plagues. Plagues will be used to regulate the population and remove certain anomalies in individuals. In individuals. Eight, beauty. Tattoos, piercing and permanent makeup will be encouraged. So will permanent jewelry and other implants or cosmetic surgeries. There was much more discussed in this meeting. It was all for evil. I was an observer of this meeting. It was already in the planning and foundation building stages now. As I stood watching and listening to all that was occurring and being planned, Uriel came up to me. Uriel, Aaron, I have a message for you from God. Aaron, do not be afraid that which you have been shown. It will instruct you on the ways you should go. And brothers and sisters, this is also the ways of the Lord where, we, where she is going. But the other side will be the ways of New Egypt, the evil ones with everything, with the plagues and all. Egypt was the master of beautification with markings and piercings and everything. I immediately felt in my spirit that these plans would not be implemented in our detriment. To our detriment. This outline of their evil plans was instead for the purpose of showing how bad things would get here on earth. For us if it weren't for God intervening on our behalf. Chapter 4 over. Me. This dream was quite detailed. And Jesus said, Aaron, there are some who claim to love me that worship the moon and the sun. They also use items sacrificed to their gods. Churches have even removed the cross from the sanctuary so they won't be reminded of my victory over death. There are now stages rather than altars. Make no mistake, the enemy has planted many seeds. Even though a church may still have beautiful glass and crosses, an altar and even candles, this does not mean they are mine. Many of the pastors leading the church are evil. That's what I'm always telling you, brothers and sisters come out of the churches. Therefore, the church becomes unclean. My church has been the subject of attacks and blasphemous practices. This is not new. None of this is new. However, there is something that the adversary will never see coming, as he has seen me not being 
as visible active in the world as I was many years ago, he has somewhat forgotten all that I'm capable of. He will never expect it because the years has weakened his memories of the true power of God and his innovation in heaven. This is why the enemy sends plagues, sacrifices, babies, and praises himself. He thinks that I am helpless to see this or to stop that. He directs memorials to his legacy. He calls on his sons and daughters to spread evil of all kinds, to lie, rebel, commit fornication. He then asks them to do it all again tomorrow, the next day without stop. Despite all of this, let me assure you, Aaron, the enemy will not prevail. Lord, I saw four angels. I recognized three of them. I have never seen one of them. These are angels who work for God. As I am in you, I will work through you. They will be as a as host to facilitate the plans of God and establish his crown over the nations. Who did you see and what did they do? I saw thousands and thousands of us. There was Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and a force that I've never seen before. Jesus, these are my angels who will oversee the great harvest of souls. I will call upon them to facilitate my bride. What did you see? So many wonderful things from each of the four angels. Michael, strengthening and granting supernatural powers to the long-suffering in order to serve God and crush the enemies. The army is called. Praise to the Lord. Raphael, administering healing powers over plagues, diseases, and wounds of various kinds. O oh, miracles. Gabriel, granting powers of all the elect of God, his bride, including supernatural wisdom, knowledge, and powers over darkness. The unknown force angel, the facilitator of repentance, supernatural giving hope to those in need of Jesus and his offer of eternal life. Jesus, while the name of the fourth angel is hidden from you for now, he does my will. They are the angels who will assist myself, the groom and my bride. They will prepare the hearts of those who are to be harvested. They will usher in great healing, miracles, signs and wonders. As a great gift to my bride and as an answer to the, her prayers, I will heal the lands. I will display awesome deeds. I will set the prisoners free. The captives will be released. All that was stolen will be replaced. Even the lands will shake and graves will be opened. There will be great joy as sons and daughters will be returned to their parents. Parents destroyed by the adversary will be reunited with their children. Tragedies will be reversed and even cities restored. The nations will enjoy a time of great reversal. Aaron, the tides have changed. It is time for you to rejoice and pray. Aaron, all you have prayed for has come into this time. Rejoice. And the dream is over. Brothers and sisters, how amazing was that from a voice of the Lord, confirming everything. And all this restoration that she heard at the end of times is for whom? It's for the ones who are standing with the kingdom of God during the tribulation. They will have it all restored. They will have all the blessings. And then paradise will come with the rapture of the church. Why are they getting all the blessing and restoration right now? Because they are the harvest workers and the powerful warriors and they have to go and seek the lost sheep and return them home. They will walk as the image of the Lord. Do you really believe that the Father will send their sons and daughters as broken vessels 
onto the battlefields? No. He will restore them. He will transform them. He will give them power. He will give them use. Everything that he has promised. And it will all be fulfilled. But woe to them who will be standing on the other side of the coin. For the evil empire, for New Egypt, they will be slaves and everything will be taken away from them. All is here and all is duality. The Lord has declared it, that there are two sides, good and evil. And this polarization that you see in the world right now, it's all because of this duality. Take your stand. Stand with the kingdom of God. And listen to the voices of the Lord. And fulfill what your calling is. And build the safe haven. The burnt altar, Aaron received it for a design. The design is not yet the building, but during seals, everything will be designed so that the building of the temple can take place in the first half of trumpets, and the foundation of the temple will be laid amid seals, but not the complete building. Brothers and sisters, it is all there, and most likely this Jewish man that was sitting there with the designers together, is none other than Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, so is better, Zerubbabel. The one who has built the temple, the one who will lay the foundation, Zechariah, the one who will also finish the temple, Zerubbabel. That is the Jewish man that was sitting in the dream with Aaron and the other artisan to prepare the design right now. Not the building. The preparation. Then he will lay the foundation made of seals, and then made of trumpets. The temple will be, uh, then first first half of trumpets. The temple will be built. But important to understand that you need to listen to the voices that the Lord has brought forth, and that you need to step forward. And if you are a powerful warrior, you need to fill the war chest. And if you are a harvest worker, you have to prepare with me together the safe haven. It is for you and it is for your harvest. It is a matter of life and death, and it is for the glory of the kingdom of God that the altar will be built with 12 unwound stones, exactly as he has told Aaron. So will it be done in the safe haven, so that fire can fall from heaven, and the holy item will be also placed on that altar, so that the presence of God can be there every day, day and night, and that you can seek him in the tent of meeting, when you will be standing before this altar, under an open heaven. Listen to the voices of the Lord. I will pin that dream in the first pin comment, so that you can read it by yourself, and that you can maybe even use a translation or anything for it. Brothers and sisters, be blessed. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.